Welcome to our advanced demo. We'll go into detail about how to use databases in Notion, what they are, how to build them, customize them, and the wide variety of workflows you can create with them. First, I'll show you what databases look like in Notion and how to create one from scratch. A database is a type of page that helps you to store information in a structured and accessible way. Creating a database in Notion is as simple as clicking on the plus button and selecting a type of database here. Let's choose table. We'll go into the others later. A new page is created. You can give it a name and an icon and start adding information to your database in the first column. In all Notion databases, every entry is its own page, which you can access by hovering here and clicking open. You can use this page to add and edit all the information you want to each entry. The body of the page here can be used like any other Notion page. Add whatever type of content you want, like text, images, subpages, and even other databases. At the top of the page, you'll find what we call properties. Properties are pieces of information about each entry in your database. For instance, if entries are tasks, you can use properties to add due dates or owners. If entries are customers, properties can show what company they work at, deal size, etc. Notion lets you add all kinds of different properties, like numbers, single select menus like tags, multi select menus, dates, people, and more. New tables give you two default properties files and tags. The first is for adding attachments from your computer. The second is for adding any keywords associated with the page. Add more by clicking add a property, give your new property a name, and select the property type. Let's say this is a task database. I'll add a date property to capture a deadline and a person property to show who it's assigned to. To add information, click on the field. You'll see the date property brings up the date picker. And the person property lets you type the name of anyone on your team to tag them. To delete a property, click on the six dot icon next to it and go here. Everything about properties is fully customizable. Now, if you go back to your table database, you'll notice that our newly added properties appear as columns. Here's what a more filled out version of this database could look like. You can also add and delete properties directly in your page like this. Now on to database views. You can view any one database you create a number of different ways. And you can switch between these views instantly. So here's a table database. This is a hypothetical roadmap for an engineering team. Every data entry here is a project and every column is a different project property. They show who the product manager is, the engineers, type of project, priority, status, and timeline if applicable. All of this information is a lot to process at once, but if this information is shown to you in different ways, you'll be able to make a better sense of it and use it faster. To add a different database view, click on Add a View at the top left. Select the type of view you want, here, we'll add a board so we can see our projects flowing through our development process. Give your new view a name, hover over the Group By section of your board, and say Group By Status. You can also create views that show your data filtered in a useful way. In this particular database, there are three types of projects, tasks, epics, and bugs. If all you want to see in this board are tasks, create a new view, then add a filter. Click on Filter, then say Type is Task. Now this board only displays projects that are tasks. You may also want to view your tasks in order of priority. As you can see, priority is another property in this database and ranges from P1 to P5. To do this, create another view. This time, let's use a table again. Name it By Priority. Then click on sort, add a sort, and say priority is ascending. Now the most pressing tasks are listed at the top of each column. Whenever you click on this menu, you'll see all the views you've created so you can toggle between them and find what you need fast. No need to apply the same filter again and again. 
always have the right data set at the right time. One more thing. You don't have to display all properties in your database if you don't want to. To only show the ones you want to see, click on Properties. Toggle on the ones you want to see and toggle off the ones you'd rather hide. With database views, you can create very custom subsets of data, like a calendar view only for the projects that are tagged as epic. or a list view only displaying projects where you are the product manager. You can call this view Assigned to Me. Finally, a gallery view comes in handy when you want your data to be showcased through visuals and other images. A roadmap may not be the best example to illustrate this, but picture an employee directory like this one. Now that you know how to build your own database from scratch, let's talk about the actual items you can add to them and how to make that easier. This is where database templates can be great time-saving tools. Let's say you want to add the same type of info to your database again and again. Like in our roadmap example, you always want to report bugs the same way. Or you want to ensure that every task starts with the same background information on the problem, goals, and metrics. You may want to use a format like this every single time but you definitely don't have to recreate it every time. I'll show you how to create a template you can instantly add to your database whenever you need to use a type of page repeatedly. First, click the down arrow to the right of the blue New button, then click New Template. A window will open with this bar at the top indicating that you are editing a template. Give it the title Bug Report. This is where you should create whatever format you want. For example, we'd add these headlines to create a bug report template. We'd also enter bug in the type property. Click out of this window to automatically save and close it. Now, next time there's a bug to report, you can simply go back to that down arrow menu on the new button and click bug report. A new page will appear in your database and when you open it, you'll have that format ready to go, including the property you added to the template. You can always go back to Edit, Duplicate, or Delete a Template by opening the New Template menu and clicking the three-dot icon to the right. You can use this all types of ways. You could have a database for meeting notes where creating a new meeting automatically adds usual attendees. Or a database for design specs, where a template prompts you to add user insights and hypotheses. Now you could spend your time getting work done, not doing work about work. Notion gets even more powerful when you connect data across multiple databases. This is possible with Notion's relation property. To demonstrate this, I'm going to use these two databases used for managing a retail clothing business. One of them tracks items that were purchased, and the other tracks customers. In the items database, you'll want to know which customers purchased which items. And in the customers database, you'll want to know which items were bought by which customers. To relate these two databases, you'll need to add a new relation property to your items database. Click on the plus sign to add a property, then select relation as the property type. This will automatically open a window where you'll be prompted to choose another database you want to connect to. In this case, select the customer's database and hit create relation. A new column is added to your items table. Rename it customers, Click inside those cells, and you'll be prompted to select which customers bought every item. For example, here, Aileen, Leonore, and Nicholas bought a shirt. Every customer who bought a pair of shoes now neatly shows up here, and the ones who purchased a hat are listed here. Now, if you go to your customer's database, you can see the list of items each person bought in this new relation column that appeared the instant you connected these databases. You can rename this column Items. What's more, you can access pages in the other database this way. If you're in the Customers database, just click on any of these items to open the corresponding pages. There's no need to go to the other database to find them. 
Now let me tell you about rollups, which go hand in hand with relations. This feature allows you to pull data into a database based on the information in another that's connected to it. Say you would like to add another column that shows how much every customer has spent in total, and the price of every item is listed in the items database. Add a property by clicking on the plus sign and select rollup as the property type. Give it the name order total. Click on any empty cell under your new column and you'll be prompted to select three things. The related database where you can find the price of every item, the property you would like to pull from this database, in this case, price, and the calculation you would like to make, in this case, a simple sum. Your new column will display the total cost of every customer's order. Relations and rollups have endless applications depending on what you want to do. Create simple systems or complex workflows. It's up to you. In this last section, I'll show you how you can add copies of the same database throughout your workspace, wherever you want them and customize however you need. These are called linked databases. Think of them as excerpts from an original database that lives somewhere else in Notion. Let's say your entire company stores meeting notes in the same database. There's a chance that you would like to see a filtered version of this database somewhere else. For example, you would want to bring up all engineering meeting notes here at the top of this engineering wiki page. Place your cursor at the top of the page, type the forward slash key, then the word linked, and the create linked database option will show up. Press enter, and then start typing the name of the database you want to link. Select it from the dropdown, and here's your meeting notes database again. It's an exact copy. If all we want to see here are engineering meeting notes, we'll need to apply a filter. Click on the three dot icon at the top right of the database, then select filter and add a filter. Team is engineering. You can add the filters, sorts, and views you want to a linked database without having it affect any of these qualities of the original database. However, if you edit any content in the database, these changes will be reflected in the original. It's a great way to keep a shared resource up to date while only focusing on the information that's relevant to you and your team. One more example might be a shared team task database, where every individual can create a linked database view of their own tasks in their own page. And that's everything for this video. You should now feel confident about creating a database in Notion and using the many powerful tools I showed you to set up workflows and stay organized across many projects, people, and teams.